Welcome to Astronomy with Josh. Today, we'll check out one of my gizmos, the Astrotech AT-102ED. Check it out. Hey, what's up everybody? Good to see you. It's been a little while, hasn't it? So somebody left a comment on my channel and said, hey, what is this telescope? And is this a feather touch focuser? The answer to your question is, it's the Astrotech AT-102ED and no. But let's get into it. So we're gonna talk about what it is, we're gonna talk about what this mount is, show you some of the photography um, I've done with my brother through it and what observing is like with it and what it's like to have this scope. Okay, so for starters, the thing that really matters when you're talking about any scope, the optics. This is an ED, so that's extra low dispersion glass doublet. I think it's FK61, whatever it's called. It's got knife edge baffles in there, you can see. Fully multi-coated, an F7, so it's a 714 millimeter focal length, moderately fast scope, got that retractable dew shield. This was a batch that the manufacturer shipped without any badging on it. I have the new one, I just can't figure out how to put it on, so more on that later. Going down here, it's got this nice two inch focuser. It's got dual speed, which is nice, so you can get it roughly where you need and then just dial it in with that. It's got markers on there, so you can remember your setting if you're using a camera and you can lock it down, which is sweet. Had some trouble in the winter this, the rack and pinion got a little bit sticky. I think some grease was getting cold. No big deal. Um, I did notice it, but when it warmed up, it was fine. I have my 27 millimeter pan optic. Star diagonal was not included in the original one, but I bought it used thanks to Ronald for throwing that in. So that's the main scope. It gets this nice metal tube with these split tube rings. Part of the race track beyond my house. Vixen style uh, dovetail right there. And then I put the finder scopes on. I'm pleased with this little bracket I made right here. So I just made this out of a piece of scrap steel. I have my right angle correct image finder and my Rigel quick finder right here for my red dot. So this is nice. I can point it at the sky and it puts a bullseye on it. And then that can really zoom in. That's a eight by 50 right there. It's got the crosshairs and everything. So that's cool. It's sitting on, I put it on an Orion Astroview EQ mount right here it's about 27 and a half pounds fully assembled the telescope is nine pounds and then you add this so about 40 pounds when we're done said and done what this is if you've never seen one of these it's a pretty cool gizmo if i were to spin around like this right and look right above me that wouldn't be spinning this is the north star and i'm the earth so the north star is over there if you line this up with the north star as the planet spins through the night and through the day, but since we're working at night, through the night, this will track the motion or compensate for the planet's rotation and track the apparent motion of the stars with one little convenient motor that I got the kit. It was like 85 bucks for the single axis kit. I'd probably get the double axis kit in the future. It would be better for observing and getting in, fine tuning it, but single works okay too. So it's got these big old counterweights. A polar scope right there, which I really wish was illuminated. It would make things a lot easier. How's the mount? Not as good as the telescope. It's rated at 12 pounds. And so we're pushing it when we put the camera on it. There's parts that are kind of plasticky. These things, and they're hard to find in the dark. Um, there's a little slop in it. It's not too bad, but it's not great either. The telescope feels a lot more premium than the mount. It's passable. It works, and we got some good photos with it. It takes a little fiddling to get it just right, polar aligned. Got a little level, which is nice too. So, okay, observing with it. What's it like to look through? Well, there's the moon over there. Let me line it up. Ooh, this, see, this is why it's nice to have the right angle, because or the red dot, I should say. That's the cloud. There we go. Booyah. Okay, so focusing it in, the focuser night feels nice and smooth. I've got some gunk on the eyepiece, but see if we can see that. Okay, so it's pretty color free right now. There's a tiny bit of yellow around the limb of the moon. When I'm observing with higher power late at night, I can see uh, there's some purple fringing on the craters. There's definitely color in it. I call it a semi apo. It's pretty good though. If I want completely color-free images, I use my reflectors. This has a nice aesthetic to it, though. It's great for deep sky. It punches above its weight. I can resolve a few stars at the edge of M13. Lots of nice star clusters, and it's great for nebula and some wider fields. All in all, it's a really satisfying telescope to use, and 
I find it comfortable most of the time because I can sit here in a chair and look at it. Now, granted, sometimes it'll be at weird angles. But another nice thing for doing outreach is it's immediately recognizable as a telescope. I know that sounds weird, but some of the contraptions I drag out to do outreach, people are like, what is that thing? It looks like a snowman or it looks like a space heater. This is immediately recognizable as a telescope. And check out some of these photos that my brother took through it with his Canon something or other. I'll put the link up right there. Uh, right from this yard, right here, with this telescope and this mount. It took us a little while to get it polar aligned, but once we had it locked in, it was pretty darn good. Check it out. And uh, check out his Instagram. It's right there, too. Who would I recommend this to? Well, I wouldn't recommend it as a first telescope. This rig cost me about 800 bucks to put together, and if you're gonna spend $800 and you don't have anything, a 10-inch daub will blow this out of the water in terms of what you can see. Now, what you can do with this, it's more compact than a 10-inch daub. It's not grab-and-go, I would call it, because even though it's only 40 pounds, it's hard to get this tripod in and out the door, and you can take it apart, but it's more cumbersome than you would think. It's really nice to use, though, and it'll be a great second telescope. It's also a nice introduction to astrophotography, although if I were building a rig again, I would get the 80 millimeter version of this on the same mount or a different scope and a bigger mount. The mount is definitely the weak point of this rig. You want to spend more than you think on the mount. That's the takeaway there. If you have any questions, please let me know. Be more than happy to talk about it. I love talking gear. And all in all, I really like this. It's a nice compliment to my reflectors. And uh, I think AstroTech did a nice job with it. We'll see you around. <laughs>